Hey guys, welcome back for another week. We are outside here of our alma mater. Yes, yeah, Southeast, Southeast Whitfield High School in Dalton, Georgia. Yeah, we graduated, we both graduated here in 1988 and uh, we're making a trip to see some friends today and happen to be pretty close. We thought, well, that'd be a good backdrop for our video today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we know we uh, haven't given you a cancer update on our, on our, our cancer journey mm -hmm. and uh, we just went, uh, a week ago, well, let's see, I guess it's earlier this week. Mm -hmm. Earlier this week. And had scans down at Emory mm -hmm. and uh, just talked to the doc on Friday and got those results and just kind of want to bring everybody up to speed as where we're at. Yep, the results came back great. No evidence of cancer returning so far, so that's very, very good news. We are tickled pink about that. Yes, it's very yeah. good news. Uh, I don't know why, but for some reason, I was very, this is the other one I wasn't anxious about, but this mm -hmm. one I was pretty anxious about. It's been, uh, it's been almost six months since I've had any treatments. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know, this one just felt weird. I was just, I don't know. I was a little worried. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I had any symptoms or anything like that, nope. but it's just, uh, you know, it's tough guys. I mean, it just feels like sometimes you're just, you know, you want, you want to say the cancer's gone and you want to believe the cancer's gone, but... But it's always there in the back of your mind. Yeah, when yeah. you have scans every three months, it's you, you're always in that mode of, you know, I don't have cancer right now, but mm -hmm. what about this next scan? And so... Well, and you just kind of live in three-month blocks. I mean, it's not like we sit obsessed over cancer or anything, but when you go have these scans and they come back clear, you're elated. I mean, you're, you're just tickled that, that everything is so clear, but then it's almost like the very next day, it's like, okay, we start counting down till the next scan in yeah. three more months. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, this week, while I was waiting on the doctor to call to find out, you know, I went three days there without, you know, from having the scan done to you get the results from the mm -hmm. doctor. And, uh, you know, during that time, they had already scheduled my next set of scans in February where I'll have an MRI and then another CT scan again. And so the MRI, uh, if you guys remember, you know, we've been fighting with insurance companies for quite a while now. Yeah. They want me to have an MRI every three months. The insurance company won't do that. So I only get those once a year. Yeah. And so that time is in February. So they've got that scheduled already. And like I said, the next set of CT scans, which we are trying to get every three months. Mm -hmm. But it's been a battle. Well, and, and I mean, this is, we are very, very, very grateful for the coverage that we've had and the treatment that Randall's been able to get. Um, but it's been a battle with the insurance company. I mean, it, it started off really good. They were approving the scans that Randall needed. And then as the doctors said he needed scans regularly, the insurance company has just progressively been denying those scans more and more every time we're due. Um, like Randall said, he's supposed to have an MRI every three months. Um, and, and the insurance company will only do one a year. So he hasn't had an MRI in almost a year now. Yeah. And, and then they wanted PET scans because PET scans are much more indicative of, of where cancer is than a CT scan. And so the PET scans were, were being performed and then they started denying those and would only approve a CT scan, which basically started us at, at, at square one again because they had to set up a new um, like baseline. a new baseline for what the CT scan should even look like because it's so different than the scans he had had up until that point. And now the insurance company has started denying those CT scans as well. Um, and it's just really frustrating and it's, it's hard for us to deal with because his cancer is known to come back pretty aggressively. And when it does, it usually hits the brain, the liver, and the lungs. So that MRI is critical for finding out if it has started in his brain. And then we need those CT scans of his lungs and, and his liver to make sure that everything is okay there. Insurance companies just not allowing it. And, and so it's very frustrating. Well, even this last time I was supposed to have three different scans. It was mm -hmm. supposed to be in, uh Refresh my memory. The chest. You were supposed to have a CT and scan and of chest, abdomen, and pelvis, and they only approved the chest. And that's after two peer-to-peer -peer calls yes. from the doctor. Uh, and so it was it was pretty ridiculous this last time on what we had to go through to even get just the chest scan approved. And you know, honestly, the only reason why they got that approved is there is uh, I do have a spot on my lungs that they're keeping an eye out. Uh, for. It was it was there before any of the other surgeries or anything, so it's mm -hmm. been there for a while. And the doctors are not thinking it's cancerous, but they still need to keep an eye on it. 
Yeah, and where it's at, they can't get to it. It's to, too small to, to really test. Yeah, to test or anything like that. So they're just trying to keep an eye on it. And that's really the only reason why we got the chest scan approved this time. So, right. uh, so it's, it's just been, you know, it was very frustrating. Uh, I probably said a few things to the insurance company I shouldn't have said this last time, but you were very nice. You know, uh, it, 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 it wears on you. You know, every three months when you have to go to battle uh, to basically save your life, it gets very frustrating. Well, and we get it. it. The scans are not cheap. It's very expensive treatment, but to us, I mean, it, it's so much more cost-effective to do these scans every three months and perhaps catch something early rather than have to wait a year or more to find it and then it be so far gone that number one it could possibly be untreatable but number two the treatments would be super expensive again so uh, it, it's to us it's preventive medicine yeah, so like it's very frustrating when the they, set they of scans when they deny. yeah the set of scans we supposed to have this time was going to be around four thousand mm dollars -hmm. versus if we don't have those scans and it comes back you're talking hundreds, hundreds of, of thousands. thousands of dollars i mean right. so you know, it's, it gets very expensive very quick if you don't catch it. And so I don't understand all that. Um, I especially don't understand it because, you know, when I talk to the doctors, it's, you know, basically they're not asking me to have any more scans than any other cancer patient. It's not like I'm having to do more uh, for a specific reason. So, you know, my question to the insurance company was, you know, if I'm having to fight this hard, is every cancer patient having to fight this hard? And, and our, if they are, yeah. that's wrong. Our take on it is we feel like most cancer patients are having to fight for these scans. And that's a problem with our system. Yeah, and that's what I told the insurance company this time is, you know, there's got to be some kind of disconnect there between the material that they're reviewing saying that they don't need these scans versus the doctor saying that cancer do. patients do need these scans. There's some kind of disconnect there somewhere and that definitely needs to be addressed. I, I you know, I don't know how to address it. I, I do what I can, but you know, but it is, it is very frustrating, so. Well, and like we said, we're extremely frustrated with the process, but we're also very grateful for the treatment that, that Randall has received and the coverage that we have had. So, you know, I guess don't look a gift horse in the mouth, but, but we really do want to fight that insurance company and get those scans. Well, I'm very thankful for Emory again. I, I think I say Definitely. it in every cancer video, they've taken very great care of me. I've got great doctors there that do go to fight with me against these insurance companies and they do get everything approved that we can. And whether we're right or wrong, I mean, we, we really credit Emory with Randall's life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, right now, ironically, uh, two of my other brothers have been diagnosed with cancer right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, one's having surgery on Monday to figure out what's going in, on in there. And my other brother has been having uh, uh, immunotherapy and radiation treatments. Right. And uh, his isn't looking very good at the moment. So, you know, uh, we're, we're trying to help as much as we can there as far as the journey I've been through. Mm -hmm. And I think that has kind of helped him with his journey, so at least he knew what to expect. It wasn't like he was going into this blind and didn't know what to expect. But again, now his has progressed a little further along than mine has, and so we, we just got to wait and see where, where that all ends up at. We don't know yet. And so, uh, but anyways, like I say, we just, you know, it's been a while since we've provided an update. We know a lot of people do follow our journey on the cancer. Uh, and we hope that maybe some of the information we share uh, helps people on their cancer journey. Or in this case, gives you the strength to fight that insurance company because I know a lot of people do give up. So yeah. don't give up, keep fighting and, and let's make it different. Yeah, and like I say, just know that there are appeal processes if you do get turned down by mm -hmm. your insurance company for a treatment you need. Get with your doctor if they don't know, which most doctors do. You know, you can do what's called peer-to-peer where the doctor actually calls the insurance company and directly. Plead, yeah, they plead your and case. And they plead your case. And usually they can work out some kind of middle ground where at least they can get something done. Um, and you know, like I say, this last time my doctor had to do two of those to get it get it through. So right. just, you know, stay persistent. Make sure your doctor's staying persistent mm -hmm. and uh, you know, get the treatments you need. Don't give up. Well, and, and I mean, it, it may sound a little crazy, but Randall's been going through this and I, I hope that I'm his biggest cheerleader <laughs> and I try to fight for him. If you're out there and you're doing this by yourself, we'll fight for you. Contact us. We'd yeah. love to talk to you. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, that's something you don't realize, you know, when you, when you're going through this, a lot of days you just don't, if you're the person actually going through the treatment, you just don't, you don't feel like fighting 
every day. And so you need an advocate for you. So, you yes. know, try to find, you know, if you've got a spouse, a friend, a family member, somebody that can help you reach out to the doctors, to the hospitals, to the insurance companies and, and, and do that advocating for you because, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. And, you know, it's, it's hard to stay positive all the time. And I feel like we're pretty positive people. <laughs> we we're try. pretty upbeat. Uh, but it's tough sometimes. I mean, it was, it was a hard week. You know, when, I, when you get a call, well, actually, I guess it was Friday. I got a, got the call saying that uh, they had denied everything. For the following Tuesday. We only had just one business day to fight it. Right. And yeah. the, so it seems like, and that, that's the other thing I feel like the insurance company does on purpose. They don't give you a lot of time because this, this has been on the books for months. Right. For this, three months. Th this has been scheduled for months, just like now. Here it is. I mean, this is this is real time, guys. This is this this video is going to hit the same day we're recording it. So yeah. you know, normally sometimes we're a few weeks behind. But this is this today is, is November twenty second. Yeah, this is this is real time today, guys. So you know, literally, you know, it's been on the you know coming up in February. It's already on the book. So the insurance company knew this was coming up. They could have turned it down months ago, so we had more time to fight it. But I feel like they wait to the last minute on purpose, so that you don't have time. Or, you know, you just don't bother trying to fight it. Well, that adds to your feeling of defeat when you don't have time to do anything. And so, we, you know, we really had to rustle up and, you know, get a hold of the doctors and, you know, try to try to really get something going there so that we could keep the appointment that we had. Because, again, right. these machines, you know, they're, you know, you got to go to the hospital to use them. These machines aren't cheap. And well, they and stay booked up. They're in demand. And yeah. so, you know, you lose that appointment time, it may take you another month to get in there to get that MRI or that PET scan or that CT scan, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I just, I, it gets very frustrating. So, you know, you need an advocate. You know, you need somebody, especially, and like I say, luckily I've been in pretty good health the whole time through this and have, you know, had my voice and, you know, been able to express things, you know. But if, you know, if you're getting really sick from some of these treatments, you may not have that fight in you. And so you need somebody that'll fight for you. Well, they've always said it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to fight cancer too. So yeah, yeah. And so, anyways, that's this week's video, guys. It's pretty short, to the point. Uh, we just want to let you know what we're going through. Uh, again, we've hinted in the last couple of episodes. If you've been watching, we've got some really exciting stuff coming up. Some things are starting to develop. We're not quite ready to tell not you guys to tell about, yet. about it yet, but we will. But uh, it's going to be really cool. I think you're really going to like it. We're trying to, and we're trying to push it off so that we can bundle it all together, so mm -hmm. that you don't have to watch one episode and then wait weeks and weeks and weeks <laughs> to get the next part of it. We want to try to bundle right. it so we can do back-to-back -back episodes and show you the whole process of what we're fixing to go through. Yeah. But it is some exciting stuff, guys. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tune in every week. Again, we try to do a video every Sunday, 6 o'clock. I think well, there's only been one time we've missed that, and we try to do a live video that day. So, yeah. again, if we ever go live, if you're not subscribed, you won't get an alert to it. So, yeah. so make sure you subscribe and follow along on our journey, guys. Yep, thanks for listening. And let me just say, go Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you.